questions you guys have each? Okay, sure. so I actually have like three questions. My first is, I've been being told for a while now by the county that they've run out of tests um, for COVID. And I just want to know if you have like an exact time period that we have not been giving tests in. I mean, I just wanted to know when that began. Like, when did we actually run out? Because I've got a lot of people looking at this number of confirmed cases, and mm -hmm. I know how inaccurate it is. And it's, it's really frustrating for me that people are so hyper-focused on that number, knowing that it's probably been a week and a half, if not two weeks, since we've had tests available. Well, that I don't know. Um, I mean, I've heard that testing has slowed, but not stopped. Um, I'm not sure if that is a, if they're not testing at all. I don't think yeah, that's- well, I, conf I confirmed with, um, I mean, I asked Carl Zielman, I think over a week ago, and he said they, have, they were not testing. Testing was not available. The only testing that was available is through hospitals. If it was prescribed by a doctor, a hospital, um, hospitals might have tests, but the county had right. no longer was testing. So I think clarification on that would be really helpful for me. Okay. Um, just to give some context to these reports, um, you put out a nightly update from the city, county, and state, and that usually includes the county advisory in terms of confirmed cases and deaths. Yep. And yep. so it would just be really helpful context there. Um, my other two questions were, um, you guys came, the last time you were at the city council, you and um, Supervisor Gaston uh, told us about this $1 million that had been put aside for supplies. Yes. Is, is the time and a half as it's being given, or it has as it's being given, is that time and a half personnel cost coming out of that million dollars? As far as I know, no. That okay. that was that money was put into the public health department's budget, so that wouldn't come out of general employee salary or anything like that. Okay. So so that there was money put in for salaries for um, you know about uh, I think about a, a quarter of that money was put in for salaries uh, in that department, but that's only because we hired. Uh, medical people to come in to do work on this. We've had people come into the county, new employees that have, uh, you know, medical uh, professionals and things, and we, we have to pay them. So that's what that's for. The, there's been medical professionals hired by the county in response to this outbreak? Uh, I believe we have done that, yeah. Oh. Um, my second question for, or my third rather, is, um, and I applaud uh, both you and Supervisor Gaston for writing this letter and asking for, um, this pay issue to be addressed because it certainly caused uh, several problems on my end. But there's been a whole, a lot of different stories coming from the county in terms of who's being paid and how much, how much that number is that they're being yes. paid. My understanding now is that the final story they've arrived at is that 40 um, people are getting paid time and a half to work the first 35 hours of the week, all people who are working in the command center. Yes. Um, but do you know how much that overtime cost amounts to in total? Because I know we're looking at very per week and I don't know what that cost amounts to or who those people are that are those 40 people. Um, so I don't know what the cost of it is either. I'll be frank with you. I, I don't know how much that is costing us right now. I can ask the county that. Um, we've been more focused on trying to get a meeting together to set a uh, clear and concise policy <laughs> uh, and less on the those side that side of it, but um, I'm certainly willing to try to get that information from you. From the that county. would be really helpful because when we're talking about taxpayer money and we don't know how much we're spending or who it's going to, it it concerns me greatly. Sure, I to completely agree with you. So, and as as well as it concerns me, and I, I hope that we can you know kind of put this issue to bed when we get a meeting. I mean, there's. It, uh, my frustration is high <laughs> and I will, I will say that uh, honestly, I mean, we, we, there's a lot going on right now and we need to get, we need to get this to a resolution because um, really our focus should be on, you know, trying to stop the virus and stop the spread and work on our public health. That <laughs> we spent most of our time having a political battle amongst the board of supervisors. So, um, you know, that's not good for anybody. Uh, and, and we need to, we need to get to that, that resolution. So, I, I mean, I can only tell you that, um, you know, it, it, it's really been kind of, uh, unfortunate as what's happened throughout this crisis at the county level. We need to, you know, we need to get ourselves together. And have, what's that? I think unfortunate would be putting it mildly. I, I've been appalled by the misinformation coming from the county. That being said, I really appreciate you and Supervisor Gaston. You've been very responsive. You've been articulate and you've, um, You've just gotten back to me very quickly when I've had questions as this thing has unfolded, but um, I appreciate all your efforts.